Welcome back. We have breaking news for you. House Republicans have chosen Congresswoman Elise Stefanik to replace Representative Liz Cheney's position in GOP leadership. Cheney was ousted earlier this week due to criticism of President Trump and his false election claims. I want to bring in congressional correspondent Rachel Scott, ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper, and former Republican Congresswoman and ABC News contributor Barbara Constock uh, for a little bit more on all of this. Uh, Rachel, what do we know so far about how this vote went down? overwhelming vote. Elise Stefanik now confirmed as the House GOP conference chair, 134 to 46, the final tally for her. And news, let me tell you, it spreads pretty fast because former President Donald Trump has already weighed in. He says congratulations to Elise Stefanik for her big and overwhelming victory. The House GOP is united, he says, and the Make America Great Again movement is strong again. So the role here for this conference chair position is all about messaging. And so this was about getting the leadership all on the same page. Of course, you had Congresswoman Liz Cheney. She spoke out against the former president. They want to make sure that they have a positive message, a united message ahead of the midterm elections. And so that was a pretty clear indicator. Trump endorsed Stefanik even before Cheney was ousted from leadership. And now she is the top Republican woman there in the House, Diane. So, Avery, what is the message this vote sends? Because it seems like for at least Republicans, it's support Donald Trump or else. But what are they trying, what message are they trying to send to the American people with this? Right. I, you know, I really think that this illustrates the vice grip that, that pre former President Trump continues to have uh, on the Republican Party. You know, even though uh, there were many concerns about uh, Elise Stefanik and, and just how conservative she was, we uh, have seen, you know, through that vote uh, that members have fallen in line with the wishes of Donald Trump. Uh, this is his party. He continues to be the leader of this party. And, uh, you know, that, that vote really sends the, the message that, um, you know, there's not room uh, for for others uh, to, to, to get in there and, and have their own opinions. You, you need to align with Donald Trump or uh, this Republican Party might not be for you. And so I want to go to Barbara on that, because, Barbara, this is your party. You've supported the Republican Party your whole political career, but you did not support Donald Trump. So now what happens to Republicans like you? Well, there were a lot of us, which is why Donald Trump lost. And he's the sorest of losers. He only got 46.9 the second time he didn't get the popular vote. And now he's shrinking that. So even if demographically Republicans can work out to get that majority um, in, in, in 2022, the problem is if that encourages Trump, they're going to again lash themselves to a toxic candidate who cannot get a majority of Americans. His numbers now, if you judge, you know, he brags about, oh, 70 percent of Republicans like me, or even if it's more than that. The problem is, overall, the country right now, he has a 32 percent favorability. He has 14 percent favorability among independents. So you're not going to win a national election by dividing. You know, Trump divided the country. Now he's dividing our party. That's not a path to a national majority. Short term, it might help some people in some certain seats, or even because of redistricting, enable um, Republicans to get the majority. But I think long term, lashing yourself to this loser who twice impeached, the American people just don't like him. I understand a very enthusiastic group of Republicans do, but he's not a uniter, and that uh, portends and long term. I the big lie is the big problem, and that's not going to go away. And I think that's a bigger problem now. And you've seen the DCCC already double down on this and attack all of these candidates saying, you've gone in with the big lie. And that's not something I know a majority of Republicans in that caucus do not, in their hearts, think the election was stolen. Some of them, like Elise, are saying that. I mean, she made the claim about the Georgia ballots that is totally false, that is provably false, and Republicans in Georgia have said it's false. So to continue to just play to Trump and pretend that he's not just full on nuts with his um, election claims is a real problem. We lost Georgia. Trump lost Georgia two senators for us. He lost Arizona. That is not a path to victory. And Elise Stefanik, uh, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik just issued um, a statement here. I'm going to read just part of it, but she says, I'm truly honored and humbled to earn the support of my colleagues 
to serve as House Republican conference chair. She goes on to say, House Republicans will continue to put forth policies focused on growing our economy and getting people back to work, reopening our schools, promoting American energy independence, securing our borders, strengthening our national security, and protecting our Constitution. So, Avery, I want to go to you on Barbara's point about the strategy here, because Republicans may be rallying around Donald Trump right now uh, from a general standpoint. But if he expects to get back into the Oval Office, he needs more support than just the Republican base. So is this a good strategy for the party if they want to regain the majority in Congress and put a Republican back in the White House? Well, we, we've seen the polarization of some of these congressional districts. So I think uh, in terms of, of the immediate goal of, of winning back the House in 2022, it might be fruitful for them to align themselves with uh, former President Donald Trump. Uh, as far as, uh, you know, getting back uh, into the White House or getting uh, Donald Trump back into the White House, that's, that's a different story. Uh, you know, there really has not uh, been a concerted effort uh, on the part of, of Donald Trump. And we've seen that, you know, in the past five, uh, four years uh, to to expand the base. So that will uh, continue to be uh, the, the issue. All right, Avery, thanks. And it looks like we're going to hear from House Minority Leader Kevin That's McCarthy sure. as well, well as Stefanik. Let's Stephanic listen. And welcome, welcome her to the leadership team. I want to thank Chip Roy as well. We had a healthy debate and a, a good election. We've got a lot of work to do in this leadership team. We've got a lot of work to do in this conference. The policies of Nancy Pelosi and Joe Biden are destroying this nation. We got gasoline lines. We got stations that have no gas. We got gasoline in Virginia, seven dollars a gallon. We got month over month core inflation we have not seen since the 80s. The gas price has not been this high nationally since the last time Joe Biden was in the White House. We got the arrest along the border, the highest it's been in almost two months, more than 170,000. It's a health crisis. It's a security crisis where we're catching people who are on the terrorist watch list. Inflation is a tax on every single American. This is not where we were 18 months ago. It's where we were when Jimmy Carter was president. We got people giving incentives not to go to work when we have more than 8 million jobs out there that need to be filled. We've got children still out of school, millions of them. We've got a Congress run by the Democrats that pay you even if you don't show up for work. We believe in putting the American people first. Our focus is back to work, back to school, back to health, and back to normal. We're thankful for Operation Warp Speed. But just yesterday, CDC say you do not have to wear a mask if you're vaccinated. I believe in the vaccine. I believe in the ingenuity of America. I also believe we shouldn't give that away for free. So with that, I want to call up our whip, Steve Scalise. Thank you, Kevin. I also want to congratulate our new conference chair, Elise Stefanik. Uh, congratulations. You're going to do a great job. Uh, our conference is incredibly unified right now, but we're also very concerned because America is experiencing numerous crises. Uh, all across the board, you're seeing President Biden fail to lead this nation uh, through some unprecedented serious problems uh, that are affecting everyday hardworking families. Uh, it's not just in America, by the way, that we're seeing crises across the globe. Uh, you see right now uh, thousands of rockets going off in the Middle East. Israel's under attack. Uh, where's President Biden's leadership? He spent more time negotiating to help Iran get towards a nuclear weapon uh, than to confront the problems of Hamas uh, and Palestinians attacking Israel. You're seeing Russia get, continue to be on the move. In fact, not only is Russia on the move in Eastern Europe, uh, Russia's attacking America's pipelines. And what is President Biden doing? He's making it easier for Russia to send us gasoline, to be more reliant on Russia and Middle Eastern oil, because he shut off the spigots. It's not only the Keystone pipeline that he shut down, he's also canceled leases and permits on drilling in federal lands, making Americans less energy secure. And that means families are paying more money at the pump. When you see lines at the pump, that's something people haven't seen, like our leader said, since the 1970s. 
Uh, this is because of President Biden's failed leadership. Uh, where is he on these problems? Why has not President Biden nor Vice President Harris gone to the border? The border crisis has been created by President Biden's failed policies. We had a secure border when he took the oath of office and then he quickly unraveled all of those agreements, including really good negotiated agreements with Mexico, with the Northern Triangle countries, uh, that President Biden undid, creating a border crisis, and then he wants to blame it on other people. You know, there used to be a, ma a marker on the president's desk that said the buck stops here. Uh, president Biden continues to ignore the problems, hoping that they'll go away while he creates even more crises. Inflation is real. The average homeowner right now, if they're trying to buy a new house, it's going to cost $36,000 more because of the skyrocketing costs for things like lumber. Uh, and what's President Biden's answer? To pay people not to work. There's over 8 million job openings in America right now. And every small business owner can't find workers because President Biden insisted uh, that he pays people not to work. Uh, estimates are there, there's hundreds of billions of dollars in waste and fraud in that program that he created, and he refuses to confront these problems. Uh, these are problems that we're going to confront as House Republicans. House Republicans are very unified in confronting the challenges facing this country. Uh, we're going to work on those problems every single day in an even more united way. And that's why we're proud that at least got elected today. Now I want to bring up our conference vice chair, also from the state of Louisiana, Mike Johnson. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Uh, and on behalf of the conference, I'm delighted to be the first, I think, to publicly, at least in a broad setting, congratulate Elise Stefanik on her election as our newest uh, Republican conference chair. This is a, a critical season for us, an important time for the country, as has been said. All these great challenges that have just been articulated here and that all the American people know, we have an important job to do. Elise did a great job over the last several days, extraordinary job, reaching out to every member of the conference, presenting a vision for unified leadership. She committed to, to work with everyone uh, from all across the country in our conference with all their talent and perspectives to bring to bear for this important task ahead of us. So we are excited. As Steve said, we are unified. There is a great feeling coming out of that auditorium today, and we are ready to face this challenge to, to present this vision, to get our message to the American people, and to take back the House in 2022. So without further ado, let me introduce you to our new Republican Conference Chair, Elise Stefanik of New York. Great. Thanks, Mike. Well, first, I wanted to thank my colleagues for the opportunity to serve as the House Republican Conference Chair. I have prioritized listening to all members of our Republican Conference, and my focus is on unity, because that's what the American people and that's what our voters deserve. I also want to thank this leadership team. I look forward to working with them in partnership, shoulder to shoulder, to make sure that we are fighting on behalf of hardworking Americans. I also want to thank President Trump for his support. He is a critical part of our Republican team. Uh, and of course, most importantly, I want to thank the voters of New York's 21st Congressional District, whom I'm honored to represent each and every day and fight for them. The American people are suffering under the far-left radical socialist policies of President Joe Biden and Speaker Nancy Pelosi. In just over 100 days, we have an economic crisis, we have a border crisis, and we have a national security crisis. The economic crisis, we see the worst jobs report in over 20 years. Unemployment is up, small businesses are struggling to hire workers, and Speaker Pelosi and Joe Biden's solution to that is to pay people to stay out of work rather than incentivizing people to get back to work. As Republicans, we are fighting to reopen the economy, to create jobs, we are fighting against the trillion trillions of dollars of tax increases and the trillions in dollars of reckless spending. The border crisis. This is not only a national security and homeland security crisis, this is a humanitarian crisis. We see historic concerning numbers when it comes to human trafficking on the border, when it comes to dr drug trafficking on the border. Every single state in this nation is a border state and feels that impact. At home in my district, the northern border is being impacted because Border Patrol officers are being transferred from the northern border to the southern border. Republicans stand for border security. And of course, the national security crisis. We are seeing our strongest ally, Israel, under attack. And we have see seen Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi not step up 
to stand by and support Israel and prioritize outreach to adversaries like China and Iran. So I'm very excited for this opportunity. We are unified, working as one team, and the American people know that the stakes are incredibly high. We are going to fight for them each and every day against the destructive, radical, far-left socialist agenda of President Joe Biden and Nancy Pelosi that's destroying America. And I'll go to the first question from the New York Post. Julie. Um, so I, he kind of came under fire from some conservatives that were concerned about your record. Are you concerned about, I mean, I know unifying your message, but given those criticisms going into your uh, the vote, uh, I guess, how do you kind of overcome that? Listen, the Republican Party is a Big Ten party, and my district is the story of the growth of the Republican Party. My district voted for President Obama by double digits, and it voted for President Trump and myself by double digits. We have worked to grow the Republican Party, and we, Nancy Pelosi has her slimmest majority in a generation. We are going on offense and are going to win back the majority in 2022. This is about being unified. I'm a proud conservative Republican, and I will fight for the Republican conference. Scott. Is, is President Trump the leader of the Republican Party? I believe that voters determine the leader of the Republican Party, and President Trump is the leader that they look to. Uh, I support President Trump. Uh, voters support President Trump. He is an important voice in our Republican Party, and we look forward to working with him. But how can you be unified so long as you have some members who support the former president and some who don't? We are unified, and I look to the voters across America. Republican voters are unified in their support and their desire to work with President Trump, and we are unified as Republicans. Uh, as you, as I said, this is the slimmest majority that Nancy Pelosi has in a generation. We picked up a number of seats, defied expectations. We're going on offense, and we're going to win on the issues, because people are understanding that Joe Biden's pledge to bi of bipartisanship, he has broken that pledge since his first day in office. There has been no bipartisan outreach. It has been party-line, partisan, far-left votes. And the American people are seeing the disastrous results in the border crisis, the economic crisis, the national security crisis, and more. The American people are hurting, and Republicans are going to fight for them. Yes. yes. I'm hearing that uh, Chip Roy was getting the race. President Trump put out a statement last night suggesting that he should be challenged. Do you agree with that? Um, listen, competition is good in America. We are the United States of America. We should have a discussion of ideas. I welcome the competition. I'm honored for the support. We are working as one team. Uh, my job as House Republican Conference Chair, we are focused on putting forth policies and communicating them to the American people to beat Democrats, and we are going to win the majority in 2022 as one team. It's funny. Do you, um, is there a place in the party for vocal Trump critics like Liz Cheney, like uh, Adam Kinzinger? Liz Cheney is a part of this conference. Adam Kinzinger is a part of this conference. Uh, they were elected and sent here by the people in their district. They are part of this Republican conference. We are unified in working with President Trump. My job representing our Republican members, the vast majority, we will look forward to working with President Trump. Yes. Last question. Have you talked to Liz Cheney since the events of this week? I have not. Thank you, everybody. All right, that's one last thing. I want to wish our policy chair right here. Happy birthday. Um, Gary Palmer, it's his birthday today. And so, do you all remember the birthday song? Here we go. This is your birthday song. Hey! All right, everybody have a good weekend. All right, we just heard from the House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy, Steve Scalise, and Congresswoman Elise Stefanik, now the new conference chair for the Republican Party in the House. She replaces Liz Cheney, who was ousted earlier this week for speaking out against President Trump and criticizing him for lies that the election was stolen. And Stefanik is now promising to listen to her colleagues and promising to promote unity in the Republican Party. I want to go back to our deputy political director, Avery Harper, and former Republican congresswoman and ABC News contributor Barbara Comstock to unpack this all a little bit. Um, Avery, we heard there from from all three of them, really, a lot of classic Republican policy talking points. They're talking about inflation and the economy right now and how that needs to be addressed, how gas prices are high and this country needs fuel independence, criticizing Democrats for disincentivizing work right now. What we didn't hear about was election integrity and any allegations that the election in 2020, the presidential election, was stolen, which is largely what this vote 
was based on. Did that surprise you at all? Do you think that was a strategy move on their part? I mean, they've been very clear. They no longer want to talk about that. They want to move forward. They have an eye on midterms. Uh, and, you know, from those remarks, we got, uh, you know, the, the, the message is very clear uh, what this this Republican Party is, stands for. Uh, they were presenting a unified front. They were praising uh, former President Donald Trump. Uh, and they want to defeat the Biden administration uh, as well. In, in those remarks from Stefanik, what we really heard was—, was uh, what she's going to be doing in her job, which is messaging. She has those uh, Republican to uh, talking points down pat at this point. Uh, and, you know, what I did find interesting is that Stefanik also noted, uh, and she said that the Republican Party is a, a quote, big tent. Uh, I, I wonder what Liz Cheney uh, feels about uh, uh, those comments, uh, because she has been ousted uh, for, for breaking with, re with Republican leadership on uh, former President Donald Trump. So, um, you know, it, it's interesting that she said that uh, Adam Kim Zinger and Liz Cheney, they are a part of the uh, the conference, but what their role will be and how their voice will be heard uh, and, and taken from, by uh, House leadership is, is remains to be seen. And Avery, we have heard this from House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy before, after Cheney was ousted. He said, you know, the focus is on Democratic policies and, and attacking them because they're ruining our country. And he said, we're, we're done with the election. We're not trying to relitigate that. The election, it was done. It was legitimate. It, it, we're past that. But even within his own party, after he made those comments, he was criticized by other Republicans saying, no, we're not. We're still challenging the election. It wasn't legitimate, and we still want it overturned. So as they try to present this unified front, can they keep that unified front focused on criticizing and going after Democratic policy, or are they going to find that a lot of the party still does want to talk about the election? Well, the thing is that the former president still has a stranglehold on the Republican Party. And as long as he is still talking about it, uh, there are going to be Republican lawmakers that are going to continue uh, to talk about and relitigate uh, the 2020 election. Look, we all know that uh, those are false claims that the, the, the former president has put forward. We know that uh, the, the 2020 election was legitimate. But uh, Kevin McCarthy is going to have to, uh, uh, you know, reason uh, with some of those lawmakers as they try to uh, focus on what's ahead of them. And so we saw some of that in his remarks today. He talked about border security. He talked about, um, you know, the, uh, uh, the, the, the recovery and, and people going back to work and going back to school. And so I think that we're going to continue to see Kevin McCarthy try uh, to, uh, you know, push his, his conference to, uh, to go in that direction. But, um, you know, as long as the former president is the uh, leader of, of this party and still uh, weighs very heavily uh, on the opinions and the, uh, the, the movements of this party, uh, the 2020 election is going to continue to be a topic. And, Barbara, I want to get your final thoughts here. The vote was 134 to 46. What do you think? Well, I noticed that there was, I think, about uh, two or three dozen people who were just missing. So I think that goes to sort of a little level maybe of disgust with where this is going. But I think th the word you heard most in Elisa's comments was Trump over and over and over. She made it clear that's why she's there. You now have three members of House leadership who, you know, wouldn't certify the election, who supported the big lie. Liz was kicked out because she didn't support the big lie. This is very different from the Senate, where none of the Senate leadership uh, supported the big lie. You know, not McConnell, who made a very strong statement against the president. You know, John Thune, um, you know, uh, Roy Blunt and Joni Ernst, who actually uh, gave support to, you know, and supported uh, Liz Cheney and, and, and really said, hey, why can't we have some divergent views here? So I think you see the House and Senate. So I would like to distinguish there are different, very different paths they're going here, I think. And most importantly, Republicans at large out there, Trump's numbers are shrinking. They are shrinking every day. So that is why it's, I think, long-term foolish for House members to not have a longer-term version, you know, vision to unite a center-right coalition where you bring together, yes, certainly the Trump supporters, Trump voters, but you don't make this a cult of personality. All right. Former Republican Congresswoman Barbara Comstock and ABC News Deputy Political Director Avery Harper, thank you both. So again, Congresswoman Elise Stefanik is now the House Conference Chair for the Republican Party, replacing Congresswoman Liz Cheney, who was ousted earlier this week, uh, largely for speaking out against President Trump and other Republicans who continued to spread false claims about the election in 2020 
being stolen. So now that conference chair is Elise Stefanik. She's promising to present a unified front for the Republican Party. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.